morning, I'd like to talk to you about one man that I love so much. His name is Cleopas. Cleopas was a disciple of Jesus, and uh, by the time Jesus died, he was leaving Jerusalem. Jerusalem in the scripture is the place of peace, is the place of certainty, is the place of the king, David. In the first reading this morning, we heard St. Peter on the day of Pentecost, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, from verses 14, talking about the fact that David himself was the king of Jerusalem at a point, and he had said that he was invincible, nothing could happen to him. So Jerusalem is that place where you are, and you believe that all is well, nothing is ever going to happen to you, everything is settled. But of course, Peter went on to say, but we know that David is dead, and his grave is right here with us. So, this morning, Cleopas leaves Jerusalem on the day of the resurrection, because Jesus is dead. And it's been three days, we have heard nothing about him. He leaves Jerusalem and he moves over to Emmaus. Emmaus is that place where you go to when everything has shattered, when your precious vase is falling to the ground and it is shattered, when your dreams have been shattered. Emmaus is that place where you go, where you become hopeless. Emmaus is that place where you don't even know where you are going. Emmaus is that place where you are just wandering along in life and you don't really know what is coming next. So Cleopas is moving from Jerusalem to Emmaus and Jesus comes and joins him on the way. By the way, Emmaus, uh, Cleopas is not alone. So my friend Cleopas is this guy. Cleopas is like a candle and his light is out. And his companion, some people say, some theologians think that it's his wife, others think that they're just friends, but that doesn't matter this morning. But what's important is that Cleopas is not going alone, but he's going with someone else that is also, whose light is also out. So this is the friend of Cleopas, and this is Cleopas. Both of them, their lights are out. So the first thing I'd like to say this morning about Cleopas is, don't move away from the place of light. We are all going to need our lights wherever we are going to after this pandemic. So please, don't stay away from the place of light. Cleopas and his friend were moving away from the place of light. They were moving away from the resurrection of Jesus. They were moving away from Jerusalem. They were moving away from the eternal city. And they were going to a place that they did not know. If you watch the news, if you watch the news 10 hours a day, you are moving away from the light. If you stay with people, who constantly tell you how things are going bad in the world, you are moving away from the light. Don't go with someone whose light is also out. If you move with someone whose light is also out, your light will remain out. You need to move with someone whose light is lit, and then the person can also light you up. So look for those places. Go to nature. Take a walk. Look for a friend who can encourage you. Read good books. Do things that can reignite your light. The second thing I'd like to say is that when our lights are out, what does Jesus do? He comes to us. The Bible says this morning that Jesus came to Cleopas and his friend, and he stood with them, and he looked exactly like them. You know, some of us were expecting God to come through for us, we were expecting him to come in thunder and lightning and rain and sun and powerful things. But most times, God comes to us just through people like us. Jesus stood with them, and they thought he was just one of them. But the difference between them and Jesus was that the light of Jesus is always on. Meanwhile, their lights were out. And through the, ro the road to Emmaus, Jesus tries to light them up. He begins to explain the scriptures to them. He begins to speak with them. He begins to encourage them. He begins from Moses. He explains to them that Moses had difficulties, but he overcame. He explained to them that Daniel was in the lion's den, but he overcame. He explained to them all the things in the scriptures, how God had delivered his people. And by the time they got to Emmaus, they made us seem to go on. But then Jesus made us seem to go on and they asked him, stay with us a little longer. He stays with them and they eat together. So when you find your light, hold on to your light. Because there will be winds that will try to blow out your light. There will be difficulties in life that will try to make your light go off. But you have to hold on to your light. You have to hold on to your faith. You have to hold on to your hope. Sometimes you might have to protect your light against the winds of life. Because life has so many winds, and if you are light, it will blow out your light. Now, they kept him with them, and they broke bread, and they recognized that it was him who had been leading them all the way. Child of God, listen. The reason God lights us up is not so that we just become leads, and so we can brag and say, look, I have the light, I'm, I have hope, I have faith, I'm great. God lights us up 
so that we can light up others. What did they do? As soon as the meal was over, that same night, they went back to Jerusalem. And by the time they got to Jerusalem, they discovered that there were other Christians, the 11 apostles and their companions, whose lights were also out. They brought the light that they had received from Jesus, and they put on their brothers and sisters. After this pandemic, there will be people whose lights have gone out because of this experience. God is counting on us to reignite them, to light up the world again. God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.